In this episode, we're going to take a look at how to read and write data to isolated storage on the Windows Phone 7 platform. We need to understand how to do this because in version 1 of Windows Phone 7, there is no relational database to store our data in inside our application. In this episode, we're going to first take a look at how you can read and write data using the Data Contract Serializer. We're then going to take a look at how you can do the same thing but using the XML Serializer. So let's go ahead and get started. When it comes to writing to the isolated storage on the Windows Phone 7, you'll find this not only easy, but also extremely painless. In this episode, we're going to take a look at two different ways that we can write to isolate storage. We're going to take a look how we can use the Data Contract Serializer to serialize our object model to storage, as well as the XML Serializer to, to go from an object to storage. Here's my simple GUI. It's got a couple buttons on here that allow me to read and write from the isolated storage using my different formats. The object model that we're going to use is this. We have a person. He has a first and a last name with a list of email addresses. Email address has type and address. Nothing overly complicated. Now, I've already gone ahead and I've created the shells of two classes. The first is the data contract isolated storage helper. And the second is the XML isolated storage helper. These are two different classes that allow us to simply and easily write to isolated storage. So let's go ahead and get started with the data contract. So we're going to go ahead and create a method here called void write to file. We're going to create it. Create it using a template so that we can put any object model we want into this and it'll serialize appropriately. Now the first thing we need to do when writing to storage is actually get a handle to the storage for the actual device. So let's go do using I want to access the isolated storage file. I'm going to go ahead and get the user store for application. Once I have that, I need to actually grab, turn my storage into a stream and read from a particular file. So let's go ahead and do another using statement. We're going to use the isolated storage file stream. And we need to give it a string path. This path needs to be unique for your application. So I'm going to call it dimecast.data. It can be anything you want. We're then going to give it a file mode. So we want to say file mode dot open or create. And then last, we need to give it our storage pointer that we created up in the previous using statement. Once we have an access to our stream, now it's time to read and write to it. So because we're going to do a write here, let's go ahead and use our new data contract serializer. And we're going to tell it type of T. And once I have my serializer, I'm going to do serializer.write object, give my stream I'm going to write to and the model I want to write. Now, in order to use the data contract serializer, you do need to add a new reference to your project. So you need to come over here and add a reference to system.runtime.serialization. Once you've done that, you basically have the code needed to read and write, or excuse me, to read to isolate storage. You'll see that's pretty straightforward. You have one user statement to grab a pointer to the storage second using statement to actually turn that into a stream and then you're going to use your contract serializer to turn your object model and stream that into your stream. Let's go ahead and create the read method. And we're going to read, change the signature just a little bit, say read from file. Now the only thing we're going to do a little bit different here is we are going to use the read object. Read object expects a expects it to be typed, so let's go ahead and type it. And I'm going to return it back into my variable called read model, and I'm going to do a return on my read model. And that's it. So the first two lines are the same. The only difference here is I'm changing from a write to a read, and all is done. Now I want to create one more method, and this is a method that will read the raw file as it exists on isolated storage. I'll go ahead and copy paste this in to save a bit of time here. Basically what I'm doing here is I'm just grabbing the stream reader, and I'm going to read, all the, read the stream to the end, return that as a string file. The reason I want to do this is so we can compare the results uh, between a data contract and an XML. Now that we have those three, I'm going to go and actually copy and paste all three of these methods into our XML storage helper because we're going to only have to change a small few pieces of data 
such as the location on disk to store this to, as well as the change our serializer from the data contract to the XML serializer. In order to use the XML serializer, you do need to reference system.xml.serialization. You'll notice that immediately I have to change my write object to or write method, excuse me, to use the serialize method, but after that the signature is exactly the same. Let's go ahead and do the same thing for our read. So here I just changed my read object uh, to, dot serial, to dot deserialize, and everything's the same there as well. So now that we've created our six methods to allow us to read and write in multiple formats, let's go ahead and put breakpoints here so that we can step into this code. And let's run our application and see if it actually works. So our application loaded. Let's go ahead and click on the write DC, which will write to storage using the data contract serializer. Here I'm creating my object model. And I can step into the method. You can see I grab a handle to my storage, be able to grab my stream, and I can take my object model and serialize that to isolate storage. Now if I click on the read data contract, I'm going to actually turn on and get that data I just wrote into storage and pull it back out. you'll see that I do have a populate object model that has my email addresses as well as my first and last name. That's pretty cool, pretty easy. Let's go ahead and do the same thing with the the XML serializer just to make sure that we have everything working here. And sure enough we do and let's go ahead and read it back out. And you'll see that I have all the data. Now the one last thing I want to do is I want to show that I can read this raw and this is going to return my results as just strings, not as uh, my data model. And I also want to take a look at two different things here. The first thing I want to do is when I read from my file using my XML, this is my storage location at serialized VXML. Let's step into this. Once I get a handle to my stream, let's go ahead and look at the size of this. It's got a link of 466 bytes. Not real big because I've only serialized one object to it. But let's remember that number, 466. Now we're going to bounce to our data contract library and we're going to step into this as well. If I look at my stream, it's at 418. Even though the same data is being serialized to isolate storage, the different serializers will store the data differently. So you need to pay attention to this and you need to figure out the trade-off between size and flexibility between the data contract serializer and the XML serializer. So I can let that run through and you'll see I have both my XML or my strings populated and if I look at it using the text visualizer here's what my XML looks like when it came out through the XML serializer and if I do the same thing for my raw document here which is my data contract you'll see it's essentially the same thing it's just not formatted as well um, in fact let's change that format so we can look at it as XML what you'll see is they're the exact same format. This tells me that my same object model is serialized both in and out using the two different contract serializers perfectly the same and I get the same results. So there you have it. Just to recap, to write to storage we need to grab a handle to the storage. We need to turn that handle into a stream. We need to make sure that we're using the appropriate file here and here in our case it's dimecast.data and then to serialize, we just simply call create instance of the data contract serializer and do write object. And to read, same basic thing, but instead of write object, I'm doing a read object. And if I was using the XML serializer, I just switch out serialize and deserialize, and everything works as expected. So I hope you learned something. Until next time.